Hey, welcome back. This is Tableau Zen Master Luke Stanky, and before we get started, be sure to subscribe. Uh, you'll get the content as it comes out to your inbox, and it helps support our YouTube channel, Data Coach, here. So go ahead, hit the subscribe button, and let's jump in. All right, in this video, we are here to create Tableau's version of a heat map. And almost no one thinks about creating a heat map this particular way. But, you know, let's take a look at what it looks like. So here it is. This heat map, it involves circles or uh, frankly, any icon and we have sizing and color being applied. Really a heat map to me and to almost everyone else. So this is really what the average person thinks the heat map looks like. It's really just color on cells and there's squares and you can sort of track multiple values instead of having multiple lines or multiple area charts, you're able to track them as individual cells. But again, Tableau's heat map, if we take a look at it, is two-dimensional, both in color and size. So how do we recreate this visualization? Well, let's go ahead and create a new sheet. I'm using Tableau's COVID-19 data set. You can go to tableau.com and then there's a COVID-19 link from there. I'll have it in the comments down below. But here's how we do this. So we're just gonna start we're going to take report date, we're going to click and drag that out onto columns. We're going to change our date to a date value of week number. And then we're going to also click again and change that to discrete. So we'll have basically one cell for every week across multiple years. And I'm also going to rotate this label. I'm also going to format it and have it aligned downward. So there we go. Now I'm going to go find state here. I'm going to take the province state name field, click and drag that on my view. It has more values than what I really want. So I'm going to go find country, short name, click and drag that on filters. And for this example, I'm just going to choose United States. Let's hit OK. Now we're down to United States and uh, District of Columbia, as well as Guam and a few other locations as well. On province state name, let's just right click format and we'll change our alignment to right align. That's just how I personally do these visualizations. And I'm also going to add a little bit more space here for each state. And in fact, while I'm at it, let's just fit the width so that we can see every single cell here um, and you know, it's, it's all right. Uh, it's not perfect. Ideally, I like a nice, even a square cell, but we won't probably have that because we have a lot of cells to fill in here. Now, if we look at the Tableau heat map in our original example, we just have one measure on color and two dimensions again on rows and columns. We have that same rows and columns, two values. So let's go ahead and add some color. Our color is gonna be cumulative cases. So I'm just gonna search for cases and I'm going to select the people positive case count. I'm gonna place that onto color and we'll see that it essentially slowly accumulates for California. Actually it's doing it for every single state, but the larger states are gonna be darker and we wanna normalize this by state. So the way we're gonna do this is we'll double click on our counts and then we're just going to copy this whole field. Actually, let's just create a new calculation so you can see it. I'm just gonna move some things over. I'll paste that in. There's our people positive cases count. And I'm gonna divide this by a table calculation of window max and paste that same value in. So this is just gonna normalize our values between zero and one for this example. And we can just call this cases total normalized. I'm gonna take cases total normalized, place that in color, and now you'll see that the color is equal. This last week isn't quite through the entire week, so it's down, uh, so we're just gonna exclude it. And there we go, now each is sort of individual state accumulates up to one. It shouldn't go down because these are the total cumulative cases. We could just add some color here, click on edit colors, and I'm just gonna choose temperature diverging and hit apply, and now we'll see how those cases have accumulated over time. 
via color. The thing with the Tableau heat map though, is that we want a second dimension that we want to size things by. And we are going to use total positive new case count and place that out on size. And what Tableau did automatically was break the cells, keep a square, but allow us to resize it. Now we technically have a heat map, but I personally, instead of using a square, like to use a circle. And that's it, that's technically all we need to do for a heat map. But once again, our challenge is that the circles are just like by the totals and we want these normalized by state. So I'm gonna double click and copy that same percent, uh, that same people new cases calculation that we placed on size. Uh, another way that I could do this is just create a new calculation and drag that value from size into my calculation. That's a nice little easy tip in, if you're ever building. So now I can just copy this people positive new cases count sum. And we're again going to use window, max, and paste that sum in it. And we can just call this new cases normalized. And this is going to be counts by state normalized between mostly between zero and one. There's some negatives in there because there were some adjustments and case counts. We're not going to worry about that. We're just going to, for the most part, it's going to be sized correctly. So now I can just click, take this new cases normalized, click drag and replace size here. And now each state is sized. What do we see here? Like what is the takeaway? Well, we can see the overall accumulation of cases but we also can see where there were some peaks. So like District of Columbia here, we see, oh, there was a peak early in May relative to some other states that had some other peaks. There was quite a large case count. It went down. We could also tell with Guam because their last peak came in November, they've had this longer tail of overall total cumulative cases. For many, many locations, we don't see that same pattern. But when we start, again, diving into the data, we can use both color and size to see these differences. Now, if I'm developing this and looking to format it, maybe the way that I would normally do it is, I actually think in this case, we really do want to have row dividers that we can see. So I'm going to add a row divider in here and change the level. So now that we can see the individual cells, and it's almost also worth calling out that we, probably want the same thing for column dividers. So I think they make sense in this case to actually show the divider because we have all this white space, we need something to help guide our eye. So we can do it with row and column dividers or another advanced tip is to double click on columns and type min 0, .0 0.0 and repeat the same process on rows, min 0, .0. When we do this, Tableau creates these dashed lines. We, this means we can get rid of our row and our column dividers, and we have lines that trace these values out. You'll see our sizing of our, our circles as a result of adding min zero, by the way. One of the challenges is that it doesn't go outside of our particular cell. So it sort of stays in its bound, which is another little nice trick and tip here is that we can sort of have this interesting uh, like caterpillar plot, if you will, because of it. And we can just right size these out a little bit more. And we have these interesting caterpillar like shapes to articulate our visualization. Um, and we, you know, the, all we had to, to do is then just uncheck show header and uncheck show header. And we have again, that nice caterpillar plot. Anyway, that is one of those additions for me that sometimes I'm willing to make and add to my view. If I don't want that caterpillar look, I just size down my dots here and we're back to the original look. However, this time, instead of having row and column dividers, we've got these lines that are leading through the dots instead of around the dots. And I think this is the benefit of using the min zero is that you have these dots that connect everything together and it's easily traceable because it's from dot to dot and not between dot to dot. Anyway, I have a question for you. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer the dividers that separate each circle and are between each circle? Or do you like the lines that you're seeing here? Go ahead in the comments, write just one word, either write lines, if you like these lines, or if you like the dividers, put down dividers. 
And then you can just see how everybody who's watching the video prefers to create their Tableau heat maps. Anyway, that's this video. If you did enjoy it, if you did pick up some very interesting tips, whether it's using the lines, whether it's creating the heat map, whether it's the caterpillar plot, go ahead, hit like, and don't forget to subscribe so you can get the content in your inbox as it comes out. Anyway, I'm Tableau Zen Master Luke Stanky. If you do, please go ahead and check out datacoach.com for our training that we have out there as well. You can go ahead and get one-on-one -on -one coaching and you get badges uh, that go right on your LinkedIn after you have completed a course. Anyway, thanks again, and we'll catch you in the next one.